Senua City Secrets! City Secrets! I trust everyone slept soundly. The silence up here can be deafening. Well, I just had the best doggone sleep of my life. Sven slept like a baby, but strangely, Officer Poncherello's bed remains untouched. <laughs> Assistant District Attorney Cricket Blair didn't sleep in her bed either last night. I wonder if it's just a coincidence. I hope they're all right. Oh my. <laughs> Well, I'll be. Looks like Kip has taken the law into his own hands. Nurse Kate? Oh, Chestnut. Looks like even Officer Poncherello is getting some. Sven is so lonely. I can't believe you don't remember Sven. The two of you were like the Brangelina of Senua City, Brittany. He certainly seems like a nice fellow. Oh, what you had was the kind of love that only comes around once in a lifetime. He was like the wind beneath your wings. Ms. Blair, when you have a moment, might I see you up at the main house? You might like want to take the sticks out of your hair first, skank. Good one, Taylor. Ah, Ms. Blair. Thanks for coming, and I'll be brief. As you know, I was planning on offering financial backing for your campaign for governor. And I'll be honest, I don't think your extracurricular activities with a certain officer of the law would be beneficial to your campaign. So what you're trying to say, Hutch, is that if Kip and I continue to see each other, I'll lose your support? Oh, Hutch, are you sure? I'm sorry, Cricket, but it's just the way it's got to be. I'm sorry too, Hutch. Oh, Kip, these are lovely. You're lovely. I can't stop thinking about last night. Oh, Kip, how do I find the words? You can tell me anything. I'm planning on running for political office early next year, and unfortunately, Relations between you and I would complicate things. Complications? What are you talking about? Oh, Kip, the district attorney dating Senua City's lead investigator? It has scandal written all over. What about last night and the connection we had? You can't deny that nothing happened. We must, though, Kip, and we must start right now. Not now. I'm sorry, Kip. Please try and understand. And just like that, she's gone. And my heart has turned to stone. Nurse Brenda, can we have a word? Sure thing, Cricket. You do look forlorn. Oh, Brenda, normally I'm such a strong woman. I've always been independent and pride of myself on my career. But these last few weeks of getting to know Kip, oh, they've changed me. Last night was the single best night of my life. That certainly sounds exciting. 
It was beyond exciting, Brenda. Kip and I connected on a level I hadn't even realized could exist. Our hearts were joined under the moonlight. Oh my, how romantic! Problem is with my political career. He and I just can't see each other anymore and my heart is broken in two. I take it that's what Hutch wanted to speak to you about. Oh Brenda, being governor has been my dream since I was a child. And now it really could happen. I can't let love distract me from my dreams, can I? Oh, that is a tough one indeed, Miss Blair. The heart wants what the heart wants. Thank you for this chat, Brenda. It's really helped me. But I think I need to be alone for a while. Mr. Lipschitz, I'm heading home this afternoon. This afternoon? I thought you were staying until tomorrow. Suddenly something came up. Please, Kip. I really need to talk. It's about Heather. Love is the devil's game, Mr. Lipschitz. We're all alone in this world. Don't ever forget that. You can only rely on yourself. But Kip, what about forgiveness being the pathway to love? What about all that? Love is a farce. Now I've got to go. Oh my, that poor boy. What have I done? Kip, wait. Come on, Freckles. Let's go, boy. Kip. Can't we at least talk before you leave? I don't want to lose this friendship. Remember, we were friends first before we fell in love. I have enough friends, Cricket. And love, well, love is just hooey. Oh, Kip, you're breaking my heart. Oh, Kip, please take care of yourself. Never forget what we once had. There is no you and I. You made that. Very clear. Wait! Kip! So, Fiona, I couldn't help but notice that you seem a little troubled this weekend. Is there anything I can help you with? Oh, there's nothing, Brenda. I just simply can't talk about it. Oh, come now. You know that being a nurse, that means I took the Hippocratic Oath that anything anyone ever tells me is in strict confidence. Kind of like a psychiatrist. You mean... Whatever I tell you, you can't tell a soul? Oh, that's correct, Fiona. So come now. What can be so bad? I have the most horrible secret of all, Brenda. What could it be, Fiona? Let me guess. You borrowed a sweater from one of your sisters, and you never gave it back? I killed someone, Brenda. I killed someone. You killed somebody, Fiona? Well, there's nothing that can be done about it now. So, all I can say is you need to move forward and start your life again, Fiona. Well, Brenda, they never found the body and the family's had no closure. The guilt is eating away at me like a buzzard chewing on a turkey's neck. Well, being a nurse, Fiona, one thing that I know is certain is that death is a part of life and the dead don't return. So your secret is safe with me. That's a one-way ticket to Senoa City, Mr. Pasquale. Chico Pasquale. Might I ask, sir, what's the reason for your travels to Senoa City, America? Let's just say, Jesus isn't the only one who can rise from the dead, mate. Oh, sir, that sounds very much like a man on a mission. Is it revenge? Revenge is a dish best served cold. So consider me the abominable snowman. <laughs>